Hello, Rim to the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize, and the ranks of the resistance against Mystery Babylon are growing all around the world. This is episode number 260. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hi, everybody. This is quite a time we're living in. Um, you know, I'm sitting here today um, very thankful for everything God's done and, and believing with all my heart that there, that there is an outpouring that began on Pentecost that is going to help bring God's kingdom into every situation. But I'm also grieved by what I'm seeing. Oh, absolutely. Um, it's such a volatile time. And I, I, it just specifically hits a place in in my heart because of where I was raised, and the you know the huge amount of prejudice and racism that was there, and so um, it's just it's just very disheartening at what's going on. And at the at the same time, Mike, this is not this is not just um, alone those that are protesting against this injustice. There's big, big stuff going on in the midst of this that's being used. It is. You know, and, and first, uh, I want everybody to pray for uh, George Floyd's family. This this was a tragic oh, and needless it was. death. It was. Death, and, and we grieve with them. It was horrible to watch that. Uh, I can't, I just couldn't believe it. Like as he was saying, he couldn't breathe. I thought, he's already in cuffs, so take your take your knee off his... Yeah. That, that, that should never be a legitimate tactic, period. And uh, it's, it's I mean, th- this whole thing's from the pit, pit of hell. It is. And, guys, racism is from the pit of hell. Uh, as far as, as I'm concerned, biblically, there is one race. That's right. The human race. Mm-hmm. And that we're all created in the image of God. And beautiful. What beautiful. beautiful. You know, I've me and Steph talk a lot about how we'd love to have a choir here someday. And I'm telling you, it's it's just not going to be complete if we can't have all the ethnic groups there. It's just not. No. I mean, that's that's what to me it's it's a it's just a portrait of God's creation. It's so beautiful. And and this and I mean, I came from a place that it was seething with racism. There was a huge portion of that occult activity down there that was directly tied to the KKK. And so, you know, when we made our stand, and I told you, you do realize that not only are we standing against like witchcraft, all these Satanism, all these things, but I said, we're going to have a direct confrontation with the people that are here in the KKK. Uh, And I had, I mean, I had already suspicioned that that was thick in that area um, just by front things. But then when the story started coming in, it was hitting a place in me to where I thought, oh, my word, this is, this is so involved in all this. It is. And, and guys, oh, where, where do we start? There's, there's so much going on with this. And I think, I think some of this, it, it, Mary, it's a strategic, I think. You know, one, one of my concerns when I was watching that uh, with that officer, uh, not only was I outraged because, you know, once the guy said, you know, I can't breathe, they should have set him up because there could have been a medical condition. There could have been a lot of things, even besides that maneuver. Well, and it, I mean, he was handcuffed. There. He's not like he's going to attack somebody. No. And besides that, even if he's done a crime, which I don't know that he did, but it was if, a, it was if a if nonviolent were, crime. You know, it wasn't anything yeah. that they need to do that. Yeah. And just you know, I I put I always look through the lens of mind control on everything, and I started thinking, what what human would do that? That yeah. you're sitting there and a man crying out he can't breathe, and and it would not surprise me. I don't know this, don't have any inside information about it, but it would not surprise me if he that man was not somebody that had been prepared for the Black Awakening. Well, one of the things I wanted to bring up when you when you look at that, you know, if if because I I try to walk through that. Okay, if, if let's say if I'm the police officer and I'm doing that maneuver, and you're right there by a patrol car, you would have taken your left hand to kind of balance yourself. And he has it in his pocket, in his pants yeah, that, pocket. Yeah, in that one. Which, which one is does. really, really odd to me. And it, it made me wonder if that was not uh, a sign or a token of him being part of the hidden hand. Mm. Which is, which of course, the, the Luciferian elite. You even go back, you know, when, the, when Napoleon 
they would always have their hand. Well, that was a sign that they were of the hidden hand, which talked about the Luciferian elite. Uh, in fact, uh, Napoleon had married a woman that was a part of the whole Moravian thing where they believed that uh, Mary Magdalene ran off with Jesus. And, and, and so she married into, he married a woman that was supposed to be of that descendancy to be able to, to empower him as emperor over, over France. In fact, after that, on his royal robes, he had all these little gold bees because that was the sign of the Moravian cult. Mm-hmm. And uh, so there's this hidden hand thing. Well, and it, it makes you wonder it, because, it, we, you know, I'd already suspicioned that they were being um, called out. And so it wouldn't surprise me at all. And see for, uh, well, see for these power players. It, you, know, th- you know, this time it, it was a, a person that was African-American. It can be whatever they want to use because they, they have a purpose. They don't care if they kill any of no, us. No, they don't care about any any uh, race. They, they would kill anyone. As a matter of fact, the KKKs killed many a white person because they, they would stand against the racism. Yeah. I mean, they don't care. <laughs> you know, that's, that's their little agenda they go on, but they have no respect for human life. Um, I was um, thinking as we watched all these things, too, and I was watching different reports, and, you know, Mike, there's, there's such a background agenda to this. You know, there, uh, obviously there's the wounds that are there from all the things that have been done in the black community. And um, Steph shared with me one thing she watched. I don't know if, if she watched a, a video or if it came over Facebook, but it was a, a woman that was in a residential area, and she was a white woman in, in her house. And she said there were just some kids out there that were playing basketball in the street and said the basketball rolled into her yard. So she was just looking out the window, and she said uh, a black youth came up and had his hands up in the air to get that basketball. And I thought, this can't go on. No. It's ridiculous. This is insane that people, you know, there are even white people that adopt black children and stuff. You know, it's 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 that they have to sit down and explain to them, you better hold your hands up because somebody may come after you. Just a kid playing basketball. And that woman was saying, I wanted to go out and tell him it's okay, but I was afraid I'd startle him. This has got to stop. It's got to. It's got to. It's it's horrendous, and we need to understand that the that the deep state, the Illuminati, whatever you want to call them, they're feeding this. They they want to separate us. That they're they're wanting to divide us because if you can divide us, then you can conquer That's us. That's exactly what it is. It all goes. It's going back to their stinking agendas of how can they weaken this nation because whatever God's destiny is for this nation it has always been a center of their attention that they have to control it that they have to manipulate that they have to stop the people that that are following god because they recognize that power is stronger than what they're doing god's power is stronger yes, than this is. racism it is you know as as a, and guys there's a lot of things going on to use this to obfuscate things we we have more coming out with Biden in the Ukraine. We have we have more coming out with yeah, the Russia with the, the Russia 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 conspiracy. The Clinton email hearing started today, and uh, it's already been ruled in court that she's going to have to testify under oath. And there and all she says is, "I don't recollect. I don't recollect." Well, they now have documents to say, "Here's what the documents say." Now, do you recollect? <laughs> I mean, it's it's they're they're so and it's interesting. Any time on the left, whenever uh they they get into a jam and they need to change the conversation or even the conversation that covid was not as bad as what they said it was and that there's probably things that that were done in some of these bigger cities to uh to cause loss of life like bringing uh covid patients into a nursing home nursing home are the most vulnerable right uh you know I saw that and I thought no th- this is this is stupidity and well, they've got here in this nursing home here, you can't even go in and visit. No, and that's the way it is in most, I think. Yeah. And I mean, everybody has to go through screening and everything else to make sure to keep COVID out. Uh, as, as, I was, as I was watching this uh, this week and looking at some things, the Holy Spirit spoke in my spirit, Jacobinism, the Jacobins are arising. And for some of you, you may not know what Jacobins are. In America, we had a, a revolution 
that was that was founded on great revivals, and then with the realization that Europe and and the throne of England had become so corrupt that we could no longer be a part of it and have those people rule over us. Well, in contrast, there's the French Revolution. And the French Revolution was one of the bloodiest revolutions in the history of mankind. And all, all of our founding fathers, no matter, and, and all the, the, the colonists, no matter what political flavor you were of, they were horrified at what was going on in the French Revolution. Now, the French Revolution was fostered by these guys called the Jacobins. The Jacobins was when Weishaupt began infiltrating the, the Masonic lodges in, in Europe. And in fact, Washington, I quote this in my first book, The Shonor Directive, that George Washington feared that Weishaupt, the Illuminati, had already begun infiltrating the lodges here because it takes it from gray to pitch black. And it was the Jacobins that, that fomented uh, the French Revolution. And you have the provocateurs. They found they find the the malcontents. You know they they were the community organizers of the French Revolution and the, the horrors of what happened during that. Uh, in American history, after the French Revolution, Jacobins tried to create a second revolutionary war in America to overturn our constitutional government, and so uh, the government was able to quickly. Uh, assemble and to to drive them out to arrest them. Many of them were executed for treason and a lot of different things. Jacobinism is is a bad bad thing, guys. Now what's interesting is you know type you know go to Google and type in Jacobin J O C O B I N and the first thing that comes up is not the the concept of Jacobinism. It is the leading progressive left magazine. It's called the Jacobin. That's not by accident. <laughs> not by accident, guys. In in American history and in world history, that would be like saying, okay, now what's going to represent a political party? We're going to start a newspaper called Hitler's Elite. That's basically what Jacobinism is. It is a bloody revolution. They want chaos. They want anarchy to come from, from every single place. And it has taken over the political left. It is the very heart of the deep state because if they can't change things politically, they, they always start with with uh, protest and they'll try the law and then they'll go they'll resort to violence, especially if they're getting to be revealed. And so at the same time, I think this is a uh, a stirring uh, if uh, what I what I'm calling hell's witch's brew because I, I'm getting married. I've gotten emails from some of our followers, some of our students that are on the ground in these areas. And you can't just say this is Antifa, okay? You also have white supremacists burning stuff down and then taking spray paint and putting Black Lives Matter. So they they know what they're doing. Yeah, I mean, they they know what they're trying to work both sides and and get yeah. everything it's it, all about conflict yeah isn't it, it? it's all it's all, all this hegelian dialectic that that the deep state is controlling all sides and so they're having white supremacists black supremacists antifa and any other discontent that they have communists all of them because the, the very core of communism is they use jacobinism to overturn the government to establish communism so would that be involved do you think with the destruction of the businesses which are already in in deep trouble because of the economy and this what's happened with this virus and being shut down oh, and, don't you think they would use that and and oh yeah and they're so hurting when you, when you look now there's you know a few places like you know there was a target and this that and the other that was destroyed but got, Mary, a lot of these where the you know the, so the black community has received this injustice that they are righteously saying this has got to stop right okay I'm with them it's and, yeah I'm stop. with them on that and then you have these guys come in and Mary they're burning down businesses of of independent uh, African American businessmen which makes no sense. I mean, you can tell it's not it's not the black community doing that. Obviously, no, it's it's like stabbing somebody after they've been shot. Yeah, right. Uh, it, it's it's horrible, and 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 they they are completely taking away the righteous cause of what the peaceful yeah. protesters are now. Mary, I have seen that when when, when I'm just going to call them Jacobins, you can call them looters, thugs, whatever. When these Jacobins show up in D.C. and many other areas, 
It is the peaceful protesters that build a barrier around the police. That's right. That was another thing I saw. I saw both sides of where there were black men surrounding a white police officer because he got separated. And then and then you'll have white people that are standing there with they're good people trying to Very just good people. protest what needs to be protested. Absolutely. And that's a right in this nation. Yes. But, uh, it is a constitutional right. I think we can pray and see it stopped. We'll talk about that later, but I, I really think we can get to the root of it. So what, we're, what you're going to see is it's like an octopus or like, you know, to borrow from Marvel, it's like fighting Hydra that, you know, every time you sever one head, another comes up, that there's all these different groups many times that can be opposed to one another. Black Lives Matter would be opposed to the KKK, and there's other, you know, black supremacy groups. They, they, they would be opposed to one another. But there's a hand behind that saying, you do this over here, then you do this over here. And there's like a, there's like a coordination that they're, they're all working to foment, maybe not even knowing the big piece of the puzzle, because you'll have one in one city do this, one in another part of the city do this. And in the midst of this, and this is being reported all across these cities, these mysterious piles, neatly stacked bricks were placed near where all the protests were going to be. Where all the where the people got and and what's amazing and, and the police have noted have, have noted this. I'm seeing it many other places, although the mainstream media won't really bring it up. There's no construction anywhere near. It's like these were strategically planned, placed, yeah. coordinated. Guys, this isn't this is not by accident. No, it's not. Not much is. <laughs> not much is. And so, guys, you know, there, there, there's uh, there's several things that we that we definitely need to pray. Now, number one and and I want to say this over again. We are one race. All men are created in the image of God. Every single man, woman, and child should be treated with dignity and respect. At the same time, every man, woman, and child should be lovingly and under the anointing of the Holy Spirit share the gospel. Because that is what the elite are afraid of the most. Is men and women that have found God. Mm-hmm. Because it can take the vilest of sinner, no matter what color your skin is, and turn them into somebody that walks, that is that is a benefit to society, that is a blessing, and that's walking with God, that is loving, that is trying to make a difference. Uh, some of the things that I think that we need to do, we need to begin seeking the throne of God about several things. But number one, rose up my spirit uh, for God, ask God to begin spot judging the architects of this Jacobin revolution. Mm-hmm. Because until they start paying a price, None of this is going to stop. Well, I, I'm going to pray that God would expose them. They Absolutely. need to be not just dealt with, I mean, uh, from a, from the judgment of God, but they need to be exposed so people can see what yes. they were doing. That will help heal some of this if they can see where it's coming from. Absolutely. And uh, we need to ask God to begin turning the tables on the deep state and to use these things that they have fomented for their own destruction. And I, I believe that we can see that. We also need to ask God to begin... Uh, releasing warring angels against the principalities, powers, and 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 the and the and the rulers of darkness that are empowering this movement. They're, you see, the those that are in the Luciferian elite, they don't do anything unless one of their channelers has received word from the principality or power ruler they serve. Well, and if I can just jump in here for Go just ahead. a second to uh, talk about uh, what. What came to me this week is a scripture out of Habakkuk, um, and it's in chapter 2, it's verse 12. It says, Woe to him who builds a town with bloodshed and establishes a city by iniquity. And so as you're talking about these principalities and powers that are already established over these areas, there's a root to why they're there. Mm-hmm. You know, and I looked up one of the cities um, just to see if I could find anything out about the founders, and there, it lists two men that it, they consider the founders that had the, the land, they were both Freemasons. And so, so your foundations of your, your cities, your towns, will always have something that is the very base foundation that those principalities and powers have been established through. That's the foundation. So, so you might do a little research on your specific city. 
If you're in New York, if you're in Minneapolis, do a little research on the founders. Do a little research on events that have happened there. Because then if you ask God to forgive the innocent bloodshed, if you ask God to forgive the sins of the founders and those type of things, there's your foundation that, that you're going you're gonna to need to rock and roll and, and just keep you know saying prayers daily over everything that's going on right now and hit those foundations. Because when the foundation cracks and it disintegrates, then the rock of Jesus, our Messiah, oh, absolutely. can take the place of that through the prayers of the people. It will, you know, it just takes a lot of prayer. I mean, I, I think that we stayed in that town where I was born long enough to absolutely break that that power. Then I think God brought us up here. We we worked over in, you know, we've seen in this county where we live, uh, new police officers a new sheriff we've seen we're seeing things change and it's it's through just consistent prayer and and just repenting for say, say father we're so sorry for the sins that have been done here father this is is an abomination before you father we just plead the blood of jesus over this land and ask that you would break every curse that you would tear down the foundations of evil and father that it would be reestablished on your word reestablished right. on your that's kingdom right. and and the power of jesus name the power of his blood and that's the kind of things that we have done to see such changes. You know, I, um, I've i really been hitting the KKK stuff forever because that there was so much bloodshed through that and so much evil that was done. You know, not only the occult stuff, which there's horrible things going on, but, I mean, it's all meshed together here. This is, this is some kind of a crazy um, conglomeration of all occult things. That's why it's taken so long, and, and I... I mean, I feel, I think that's why there's so much peace um, because of what's been prayed. And I think if we join with our brothers and sisters in these bigger cities, in any place where these this is breaking out, I believe our prayers can, um, you know, just, just put a, it's like pouring water on a, on a fire because that's what this is. It, it's like whipping it up. Yeah. It's it's causing a stir. So and and then you put mind control in the middle of that, uh, because they're they're I think they're using the harp again on even our weather. I think they're you I think they're pouring out everything they've got, every bit of technology, every bit of mind control. I think it's all coming together, and we've just got to remember we consistently ask forgiveness for the sins, break that occult power, break that those foundations up to where the, you know because the the earth will. When you've got this much stuff going on, the earth will will convulse. Yes, and uh, I'm not talking about the harp. I'm just saying that the, that God's creation will respond uh, to the things that are going on and abominations and stuff. And so, the last thing these cities need is a big earthquake. Yeah. You know, something to happen on top of this. I mean, these people are barely making it in their in these cities because their businesses are going under. There's all kinds of bankruptcies going on, and so. We've got to hit it with everything we've got as spiritual warriors. We do. I think the chief reason for this, if we don't, if we don't neutralize the spiritual forces behind it, anything else being done is just going to be flapping in the breeze. Yeah, it is, and won't because be effective. It's, 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 it's a spiritual a, battle. It's a supernatural battle, and uh, you know we need to pray for God to release the, the warring angels. Uh, we also need to pray for the safety of all the innocent that are caught in the yes, crosshairs in this yes. conflict. Um, I read one report this morning, and I, d I didn't get, have a chance to read the whole thing, uh, that in one city, the rioters set a home on fire with children in it and then blocked the fire department from trying to get to that house to put out the fire. Oh. And when you see stuff like that, it just absolutely Well, and this is you. this is hard to not let your flesh get involved. <clears throat> oh, yeah. I mean, it is so hard not to just let that intense anger over what the injustice you're seeing and all the things going on. Uh, but but what keeps me balanced on that, because <laughs> I'm quick to get mad about this stuff, is I think, no, not by the flesh, it's by the Spirit of the Lord. And I will, I will pray according to His Word. I will not... Um, allow Satan to, you know, take some old wound in me or something that, um, and so I just, every day I say, I am a vessel that the, the blood of Jesus can cleanse for this day that God can use me in prayer. Yeah. And there was one, uh, you know, just praying for the family of, and I, uh, with the report, they didn't actually give the guy's name, but he was, he was a, a, a restauranteur, a uh, restaurateur is the proper name, uh, that 
uh, he would bring barbecue out and give it to the police and everything else. And there was a skirmish, and a police officer was in fear for the life. And so he shot at some rioters that were trying to cause physical harm, missed them, and and killed that restaurant owner. Oh. And it, it was so tragic. And so we need to, to pray that God would discomfort his family. Well, and we've got some great police officers. Mike. We do. And, and But they're also corrupt ones. Yeah. And so it's part of that whole process I pray over for God to reveal the corrupt, reveal what's there so that they can be weeded out, that we can have have men and women that are police officers that, that are, are godly people. That's yeah. what that's what we've got to have in leadership, in the judicial system, in the police departments. We've got to have the presence of the Lord to get this straightened out, and it's going to come through those that will pray. Yeah, and that's actually what I have next on my list for God, to pray for the safety and effectiveness of the righteous among the police force and let any infiltrators oh. that might be a part of the hidden <laughs> hand and read all your this notes. stuff, uh, <laughs> let them be revealed and let them be brought to justice. Uh, I, I think in all this that, that there's going to be a separation to where there's no, be go, no wonder uh, you know, you know whose side you're on or what you're doing. I think that all those that want to overturn America and turn this thing into, and see, guys, if, if this happens, and this is one of the things that Dietrich Dudeman prophesied would eventually happen, that there will be an internal civil war that will so weaken the nation that Russia and China decide to invade. And Oh, yeah, we, we're in a vulnerable state. You know, the, from all different angles, from the economy to this crazy virus and all the things that are going on, we're, we're in a vulnerable state. And, uh, you know, I've, I've said this before, but years ago uh, when we had the um, Katrina, I, I had this this vision of that, that there was something going to come over the top of that to attack the United States. Yeah. And so there's, there's always, always things working in the background. This is all about destroying the United States. It really yeah. is. And putting it under subjection. And so we've got to stand for it because that, that has to mean this. There's a purpose ahead that God can use for the entire world for his purposes. There's yeah. something and so, not that I, you know, I'm saying, oh, the United States is the best in the world. I, I love this nation. I love the freedom that we've experienced. But, but there's also a pride issue that can come in there that can put you in a yeah. dangerous spot. Because w- what we have to look at is, God, can you use this nation for the benefit of your kingdom for all your people in every nation? And that's, that's the goal. Well, this is the nation because of the Constitution and the way it was framed. It's because it's supposed to be a government of the people, by the people, and for the people. Mm-hmm. And it has turned into a bunch of a leader up there ruling and thinking they're privileged above us. They exempt themselves from all the laws they pass for us. See, all these things need to change. And, and uh, in, in fact, uh, they're, they're trying to postulate that the Constitution is an outdated, outdated document, when in reality it was about a 1,000 years ahead of its time. In fact, there's a wonderful book on, on this teaching uh, young people about the Constitution is called A Thousand Year Leap. Really an outstanding book. Uh, because if we don't know our rights, then they can trample them. You know, uh, after the 1960s, the Constitution, basic civics is no longer even taught in high school anymore. They've replaced it with sociology. So we're, we're never taught what's in it so that if they begin taking it away, we don't know. And the Constitution does two things. It gives us rights and it limits the government. That's why they don't want us to know. It limits the government. Mm-hmm. And there are those that want to turn this into a decro- to a uh, draconian state. They, they want to do what happened in Russia, what happened in China when communism took it. They want the same thing to happen here. And, and guys, let's not, let's not take the, the race bait and let them do it. Let's not Let's not let them divide us because if we stand up together and say enough mm-hmm. is enough, there are more of us than there are of them, especially if we begin seeking heaven because this is a supernatural thing. It's not going to be put down with anything other than the supernatural power of God. And I think it was the, uh, the what they call the Black Robe Regiment during the, the Revolutionary War that were that were so... Uh, preaching and teaching and being involved even uh, even in, in the, uh, they had their own regiment, that they were armed. I, I think because of that, it, it invited God to become, a, to create a place where we could worship him in spirit and in truth and where we, we had the freedom to really be what God wanted us to be. 
and they're, they're, they're trying to take that away. I think ever since the Civil War, there have been players that have, that have kept uh, our, our black brothers and sisters subjugated still. And that needs to stop. Right. Absolutely. That, 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 that is, uh, oh, I, I got a lot of words coming to mind. I don't want to use any of them, but it's, it, it's horrible what they have done. Yeah, it is. It is. And for, for a land that its constitution recognizes that all men are created in the image of God. You see, that's the ideal. And that's what we got to begin demanding well, for all I'm, of us. I have wanted so uh, so long to have, you know, the a black community that is built around here because there there aren't very many black people in this area, and one of the reasons is is because of all the things that have happened. Yeah. Nobody's going to come to a place where there's they're in danger, and that's been one of my um, prayers: is that Father, give us the prayers to clear this area. To where if we had a black family that wanted to come here and worship with us, they wouldn't feel like they were in danger. That is the most horrible thing to me. Me And I have been, I mean, tirelessly going after this thing that I'm going to see this broken. I'm going to see this broken in this area, this abomination that they have built. You know, even in uh, Springfield, Missouri, they had a, years ago, there were black people lynched on the city square. Yeah. Horrible. And so, so it's all these things that we've been just. Um, and the Ozarks is noted for this. I mean, it's that there it was this whole area that Albert Pike uh, basically set up for quite a while while he was uh, while he was considering morals and dogma. They actually made him the um, wasn't, wasn't he like the uh, the ambassador to the to Cherokee? the Cherokee. Uh, and so, and in fact, in the, in the city that we we came from, Dixon, before we moved up here. Um, you know, it's interesting. Okay, it's a small town, about fifteen, sixteen hundred people. You have a black gentleman drive in the city, and he, he parks on the main street, driving a Lexus, wearing probably a seven hundred dollar suit. And it's like the one of the, one of the deputies came up and knocked on his window and said, "Are you looking for Mike Lake?" Like I am the only reason. <laughs> That, that a black man would come into town, and luckily they treated him very nice because he was getting ready to retire. He was a federal judge from California that was visiting. And, and the, but the, this, oh, uh, sometimes. I know, I do the same thing, and I think, um, well, I've told you this before, that it, was, it would have been long before I, I was born. But they had a sign in that town. That said this horrible word, and then don't let the sun set on you here. And I'm so grieved. Yeah. Over what all's happened. And I know this. I know that that blood shed all these horrible things. If we will all cry out, say, "Father, forgive this. Yes. Forgive these horrible things that have been done. Free this nation." To flow in your kingdom because God's kingdom will not flow where these horrible, unrepented sins have happened. Yes. And most and most of this stuff nobody knows about. You know, people can probably say, Well, yeah, I I always know when they're um I haven't seen it for a long time, but used to I'd see there were two flags that they would stick in the back of the pickups and one would be the Confederate flag, and then I never was able to see that other flag out to where I could see what was on it. But when I'd see that, I'd think, okay, this is them saying they're going to have a meeting. And I'd know to pray. Uh, But most of this stuff, you don't even know what's going on. They're not going to come out. They're they're cowards. Yeah. They do things in darkness. Yeah, just like these rioters, they do things in darkness. And so if we all pray, I believe it will break across this nation. This is, this is a supernatural hatred, and the only thing that's going to overcome it is a supernatural peace of yeah. God. And it, it's and you know anything else that we do, if we do not start with prayer, it's not going to work. They they have the resources, they have the they have the finances, they have the connections. But Mary, I found out one thing: we have a connection greater than any of them could ever establish. The throne of God. And then once this settles down, guys, we need we need to labor for equality for all people. That that that's that's actually a part of the gospel. There's neither bondman 
or free man. There's neither when it comes to salvation. There's neither male nor female. All these different right. things that that we that we are that once you're through Christ, there is absolute equality. Now, this I think this is one of the reasons why uh, in America and other countries, without the influence of the church, you're never going to have equality. No, never ever going to have equality. And their greatest fear is the equality that we can have in Christ because we're all blood-bought, blood-washed children of Almighty God created in his image and have his fire and his spirit burning on the inside of us. You know, a true believer doesn't care the color of anybody's skin. They don't care. They say, you're family. That's right. I, I sense the spirit of God in you. You're family. That's it. And if someone comes against you, they've come against me because we're family. And we're, we're in a time, and we, in fact, probably in a long time, this is the first Supreme Court ruling that I say that they violated the Constitution when they said that governments can keep people from going to church in the, in the, where the planned demic is uh, unconstitutional. And guys, just because the Supreme Court rules on something the, in the paper itself, it's called an opinion. It does not make it law. And there have been times in our history that the Supreme Court has ruled on things and the people said no. During Abraham Lincoln, when they, when they ruled against the, the black community and slavery and all this stuff, Abraham Lincoln locked down the Supreme Court and said, you're all under house arrest. We're not going to abide by this. In a time that we need prayer the most, yes. In the time that we need God the most, they they are trying to shut down the churches. You know, there, it was within reason when this thing first started. Okay, let's let's wait and get a handle on all this and figure out what's going on. And now we know they're fudging on the numbers. They're doing a lot of different things uh, to to create. The, and I think I think part of the reason they're doing this is the the stuff with the pandemics beginning to come out. It wasn't near as bad as they inflated it to be. It is higher than the normal flu, but it still has a ninety nine percent recovery rate. So okay, we 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 need to understand this. It's not as bad. It's not passed as long. I, I think in uh, well, this. Don't you think this will show? And one thing about the riots is there's so many people in such close. Yeah, all of a sudden, that, all of a sudden, the pandemic's over. Um, but I mean, I mean, that's that's what I always thought. If we just you know walk this out a little bit, we're going to see what's what because it's going to become apparent. Yeah, it's you know I don't th- I don't think there's anything wrong with the church deciding on their own. You know, let's do some steps for safety. Let's. But at the same time, you're right. They don't have. Yeah. I think it, I think it was important that the president make that statement that churches are essential. Yes. I do think that was very important. And so I, I just, I think our, our focus has got to be, let's don't be distracted by this. Let's, let's press in like never before and say, Father, this is your Pentecost season. Yes. I'm believing for an outpouring of your spirit to such a degree that whole groups will feel it. Yes. And that in the midst of all this, they're going to cause this nation to turn to God. Yes, yes. And Father, that's our that's our that's our plea today. That's our that's our heart's cry. Yes. Father, use all of this to wake up the slumbering saints to begin praying. And Father, let those that have not expressed faith in you, Father, let them begin to seek your face. I'm married with the, with this pandemic. What I am seeing is that people are starting to look at the book of Revelation. There was a meme on Facebook. It has a gentleman kind of bending over, looking out his front door, and he says, "Okay, which chapter of the book of Revelation are we going to see today?" It, it it's got people's attention because mm-hmm. they're saying there's there's apocalyptic stuff going yeah, on. Really, opportunity to be able to share things with people. Oh, Father, let your fire outdo the fire that these people yes. are setting. Let the fire of the kingdom outdo the fire of bloody revolution, Father. And Father, have your will yes. in America. Need your help, Father. Protect the righteous, protect the innocent, yes. Father God. And let the perpetrators perpetrators be brought yeah. to let justice. Be exposed and, and uh, revealed. In Jesus' name.
Hi friends, Dr. Mike Spaulding here to announce details of the Go Therefore 2020 conference. This year, we will be providing a powerful lineup of scholars, researchers, authors, and Bible teachers for the equipping and edification of the body of Christ. Please note that the Go Therefore 2020 conference is an online event. This will enable you to participate wherever you live. Registration is now open at www.gothereforeconference.com. The cost for this one-of-a-kind conference is only $59. The theme of this year's Go Therefore Conference is What Now, Church? What lies ahead for the Church of Jesus Christ? How must we respond to the government's reaction to the coronavirus? What must Christians do to address the so-called new normal? This year, our speakers include... Dr. Michael Lake of Kingdom Intelligence Briefing, Pastor Carl Gallops of Freedom Friday Radio, Pastor Casper McLeod of Spiritual Encounters Radio, Russ Dizdar of Shatter the Darkness Ministries, David Hevner, actor and film director of The Last Evangelist on davidhevner.tv, Coach Dave Daubenmeyer of Pass the Salt Ministries, Pastor Brandon Gallops of Redeemed Ministries Healing and Recovery Center, author and researcher Doug Woodward, author and researcher Carl Tykrib, author, evangelist, and director of Hand of Help Ministries, Michael Bodea, author and researcher L.A. Marzuli, researcher and Bible teacher David Paxton, constitutional scholar and host of Samuel Adams Returns, Tom Novalis, author and evangelist Preston Condra, Stephen Menking, senior editor and host of On the Objective, and the Amateur Society Podcasts, David Arthur of I Belong, Amen Ministries, film director and researcher Tom Dunn, author and director of Omega Dynamics, Jamie Walden, author and editor-in-chief of Technocracy News, Patrick Wood, author, pastor, and president of Chafer Seminary, Dr. Andy Woods, and of course me, Dr. Mike Spaulding. You may register right now at the conference website, www.gothereforeconference.com. The conference starts Friday, July 24th at 1 p.m. Eastern Standard Time and concludes Sunday, July 26th at 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. All registrants will have two full weeks to watch every presentation from this year's conference. Conference schedule is on the website, www.gothereforeconference.com. You do not want to miss this event. What now, church? God bless you. The fallen immortals that rule the kingdom of darkness have enabled the esoteric societies that control this world to nearly fulfill Nimrod's dark directive. They have taken society down the Luciferian rabbit hole into a technological matrix of darkness. But the Almighty will not allow the enemy to bring his demonic forces for the final showdown without raising up one of his own. God is waking up people around the world who are shaking off their techno-sorcery-induced spiritual slumber and are answering Heaven's call. There is an end-time empowerment coming for God's remnant, and it is beginning to unfold in our day. It is time to awaken be empowered and become the Sheerith in this generation. The Sheerith Imperative is a must-have tactical manual for God's remnant in the last days. Get your copy at KingdomIntelligenceBriefing.com. That's KingdomIntelligenceBriefing.com. Hell may have its directive, but heaven has its imperative.